welcome to this session. In the last session, we are looking at the association relationship. We looked at uh, the basic syntax of the association relationship. We looked at uh, the binary association between two classes and uh, we looked at the unary association. The unary association is defined on a single class that is the links get formed in this association between the objects of the same class. Remember that uh, we call the association between classes, but in the object space we say that links get formed between the objects of the class. We looked at few examples of unary association. The unary association is also called as uh, reflexive association or self association. We looked at some examples like uh, linked list, friend of etcetera. Now, let us uh, proceed from that point onwards. We were looking at the linked list representation. In a linked list, the association represent the association relationship is on different nodes of the linked list. So, a node is connected to a previous node and also a node is connected to the next node. Now, let us look at another example of the reflexive association or the self association or unary association. The these terminologies are used interchangeably, unary association, reflexive association, self association etcetera. Now, here a course is a prerequisite for many other courses, okay. the reading direction, okay, here this is the reading direction. So, a course has a prerequisite of many other course and a course is a prerequisite for many courses. A course has prerequisite of many courses and a course is prerequisite for many courses. Of course, we should not write here twice, this is the other reading direction, but just for our reading convenience I have written here, but just one is enough either this or this should be enough. A course has prerequisite of many courses and a course is prerequisite of many courses. But now the question comes that uh, suppose given a problem description, we could identify the classes and the association relationship correctly, we could identify the multiplicity or cardinality of the association correctly, roles and so on. But now, how do we write the Java code for that? Let us just take one example. A member borrows one book or a book is borrowed by exactly one member. Now, how do we implement it uh, in Java. We had been saying so far that if there is a association relationship, then an object of the member class should be able to invoke the methods of the book class to which it is associated or linked. That is a member borrows any book, we can on the member can find out what is the title of the book that he has borrowed or what is the due date of the book. So, here the member has to invoke some method of the book class and to be able to invoke the method of the book class, the member class has to store the object reference or the id of the book object. 
remember that when a book object is created, then it has a handle here which we called as the reference for the book. A book is the reference for the book. Now, somehow when a member borrows a book, the book reference must be stored in the member class, so that the member can invoke the methods of the book class. And here it is a unidirectional, that means only the member needs to store the reference of the book class and not the other way, that is book does not have to store the reference of the member class. But if it is a bidirectional association like a straight line without ar arrowheads or it is a arrowhead on both sides, then we need to have the id stored at both ends. So, somehow we have to program such that for a member number this that is a member object who borrows a book a book we should have the a book stored as the book name. The book name should be a instance variable here and a book must be stored there. Now, let us look at the code. So, this is a bidirectional association observe this that means, we need to store the book reference on the member side and also the member reference on the book side. So, we do that here first we write the code for the member and here we have this uh, instance variable book and uh, once a book is issued a book that is the book is issued the reference for the book is here and then we say set book a book and in set book we make book is equal to a book and also we set a book dot set lender. In set lender we must, must have a member attribute on the book side where we set the member reference. This is the member reference. So, a book dot set lender and this should store the member reference on the book side. So, this is the code for the member we have the book as attribute and whenever a book is issued the reference of the book is supplied to this issue book with book reference and the book reference is stored here by calling the set book. In the set book we set it to a book and also during the issue we write a book dot set lender this and this forms the link on the other side. Let us see the code for the book class. In the book class, we have member as attribute, and when the set lender is called, then the lender reference is stored in the book class as an attribute. So, that forms the bidirectional association link gets formed between member and book and book and member. The implementation is uh, not very difficult not as simple as the inheritance where you could just use the keyword extend and inheritance relationship between classes could be easily implemented. Here we need to have this implicit class variable and also carefully set the id or the reference of the other object, so that the link gets formed. But uh, is there any way that uh, we can standardize the naming of the attributes? 
a standard way is that uh, the roll names if they are present they are used as the attribute the implicit attribute for example on the person class we will have uh, employer as the name of the attribute and we will set the specific company on the employer attribute and on the company side we will have employee as the implicit attribute and for the specific person, we will set the employee here. But uh, we had mentioned that the roles here are optional, sometimes we may not have the roles specified. In that case, we use the name of the class as the name of the attribute. Let us uh, look at some examples, how do we name the implicit attribute in a association relation. So, let us look at this uh, example between a student enrolls in 1 to 5 courses and a course has enrollment of 1 to 300 students. Now, how do we write the code here? and the name the attribute. Here observe the navigation is bidirectional that same as just a straight line we have drawn arrow heads on both sides that is equivalent to just a straight line. Now on the student side a student object can enroll in up to 5 courses 1 to 5 courses. So, we write here an array of 5. On the course side, a course can have enrollment of 1 to 300 students. So, we write here a student credits 300, sorry a course has 300 students up to 300 students crediting the course. So, we have used this role here naming the attribute on the student side and the role here on the student side we have used that in naming the attribute on the course side. Now, let us uh, do one exercise. A person works for a company and we draw the association relation, we drew the association relation, name the association relation as works for and it is a bidirectional association, this is the reading direction person, a person works for a company and the role of the person is employee and the role of the company is employer in this association. So, this is the association name, this is the role, these two are the role, employee is the role of the person in the association, the company's role is employer and these two become the implicit attributes. Employer is the implicit attribute on the person class and employee is the implicit attribute on the company class. Now, let us write the code for this can we write the java code for this assume that it is 1 1 that a company has one person working for it and a person works for one company can we write the java code for this so that's the cardinality here the multiplicity or the cardinality is one on both sides a company has one person working for it and a person works for one company. Please try writing the Java code for to implement this association between a person class and a company class. We display the solution here, please uh, compare with your solution. Here 
on the company class, we have employee as the attribute, implicit attribute. We call it implicit because in the class diagram, we do not show it by virtue of the association relationship, this attribute appears here. And here, as the company employees person, employee person method of the company is called with a person P, then we set the employee to P and uh, the attribute is set to P. Now, on the person side, we have the employer as the implicit attribute and we can invoke a method like uh, get works for that for which company the person works. We call the get works for method for the person object and it returns the employer. The employer is the implicit attribute storing who is the employer of the person. And on the person side, we can set company And here, as we call the set company with a company reference C, the C is stored here in the employer attribute. So, the simple bidirectional association, one one association between a company and person can be represented in this Java code. Many case tools actually generate the Java code. If we draw the class diagram, there are many case tools. For example, the Argo UML, you can install it on your computer, draw this class diagram and observe that such code gets automatically generated and these case tools generate code in Java, C++, etcetera as uh, per requirement. Now, let us look at this association. An advertiser has one account and n account is associated with a single advertiser. An advertiser has one account and n account is associated with a single advertiser. Now, you can write the code for the advertiser side and uh, since this is uh, the cardinality here is 1. That means, when an advertiser is created, we have to establish a link with a account class and that we do here. This is a possible implementation that uh, when we call the constructor, we create an object in the constructor itself an account is created, new account, an account is created and this account is stored here. So, the association is the link between the corresponding objects is created as soon as an advertiser object is created, the corresponding account is created and we have this one one association and if we call the get account, it returns the account. Now, what about on the account side for the account class, what code do we write? Please try to write the code for the account class based on the code we have written for the advertiser class. Please write the code and uh, compare with the one that we display here, because only by yourself writing the code and then comparing you can find out any mistakes that you commit. So, this is the code that we had written for the advertiser class. The account since we did not have a role here, we have used the class name itself as the implicit attribute and we created the account object whenever we created an advertiser object implicitly by through the constructor here. Now, let us do that for the account side. 
on the account side we will have uh, the advertiser as the owner or we could have written here advertiser and then we have this uh, account w once we call the account with the uh, advertiser object we store that that is basically this here Ob look at this that uh, we call the account okay new account this so in the new account this we are passing the reference for the advertiser object here to the account object that we are creating and that's here the constructor for the account and we have this uh, advertiser this owner and we are storing the owner for that and then we can have methods like get owner. So, the one one association gets formed in the constructor itself. In the constructor once we call we pass the reference of the advertiser object and then the new object account object gets created and it is linked to the advertiser object. Now, let us uh, display one diagram class diagram with class relations, please try to read and understand. How do we read this? This class relation, the association and uh, inheritance relation. So, we can read here that a bank has many accounts, an account is with only one bank, an account is there with one bank and the accounts are of various types. The account can be a checking account, account can be a saving account, account can be a money market account. A bank has many accounts and an account can be a checking account, saving account or money market account. Now, let us have another UML class diagram. Let us try to understand this diagram and read this diagram. How do we read this diagram? We will read this diagram. Let us start from here. A CPU has up to two controllers and a controller is there with exactly one CPU. A squashy controller is a special type of controller. A squashy controller controls 1 to 4 disk drives, but a disk drive is controlled by exactly one squashy controller. A CPU has 0 to 2 controllers that is up to 2 controllers one squashy controller controls 1 to 4 disk drives. A squashy controller is a special type of controller. Now, assuming that we have understood and we can read the diagram, how do we write the Java code? How do we implement this class diagram in Java? If we have a case tool, we draw this a case tool like Argo UML, you can download install on your computer, draw this diagram and see what code it generates. So, here a CPU has many controllers and a squashy controller is a special type of controller through the extends relation and a controller is used in exactly one CPU. So, this we remember here the CPU object to which it is connected and a disk drive 
is connected to only one squashy controller. So, that we saw on this side that a disk drive has uh, is connected to exactly one squashy controller. But how do we implement the association multiplicities? Let us take an example that we have uh, a member can borrow up to 10 books and a book is borrowed by exactly one member. So, on the member side we should be able to store the object reference for 10 books and that we store in an array like this. If it is 1 to 10, it is not very difficult, but what about star? Instead of 1 to 10, we had star here that is it we can borrow as many books as he likes 0 to many books many can be any number may be 10, 100 etcetera. So, we cannot use an array because we cannot give an upper limit to the number of books you can borrow and fortunately we have the Java collection classes that can be used in this situation when we have the array size as variable. This is a conventional array, but Java supports the collection classes and uh, the collection classes are added to Java as part of the JDK 1.2. We are almost at the end of this session. In the next session, we will see how the Java collection classes, various types of collection classes can be used to implement the multiplicities in a association. We will stop here. Thank you.